Welcome to Ask Quinn, everyone. And this episode is being recorded on Saturday, June 30th. It will come out July 4th in the U.S. Thank you very much. Because my guest today is actually calling in from Australia, of all places. Australia has been on my bucket list for many, 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 many years. And loyally has a disability. He also writes for a living. And his books are very interesting. I took a sneak peek at his website. So I'm going, Mr. Riley, take it away and explain more of what he does. Uh, good day, everyone. Um, like Wynn said, I'm from Perth, Australia. Uh, I've recently, um, in recent years, started writing. Uh, I've done quite a few different things over the years and stuff, but um, being disabled and stuff, I like to think of my future as I don't know where I'll be in 10 or 20 years. So I've always loved writing and have written since I was a kid, really. So I want to one day hopefully be a very successful indie writer. And I've mainly written in fantasy and science fiction, and I have about seven or eight books out there so far. And I'm hoping to release at least five or six books every year sort of thing and um, hopefully make a future for myself uh, in 10 or 20 years' time, something I can sort of live off and retire on sort of thing. So, yeah, it's been great writing and I've learned so much and I've met so many other writers and stuff since I've started. And it's just been so great trying to be an online entrepreneur sort of thing. Well, I also awesome. have a YouTube awesome. channel where I try to help other writers with stuff as well. And so uh, doing podcasting on YouTube sort of been a side thing for me. You do? You can tell me that. Um, at least I didn't see that on your website. Jeez. Now, um, <laughs> so you, YouTube saw I'm getting up there. Yeah. Now, why, what made you... Um, Start writing despite your disability. I've always been um, wanting to ask another disabled person this. So get my question answered right out of the shoot. <laughs> um, I mean, as I mean, I have a physical condition. It's called ankylosing spondylitis, and my spine is fused, so I can't bend the spine at all, and it affects my movement and stuff. So. Most of my jobs I've done have been physical jobs. I did want to be a teacher, but I decided not to do that because it was stressful. <laughs> so as I've mainly stuck with sort of more physical jobs, I know that uh, my joints, uh, like I have, I'm mid-30s and my joints are like a 50-year-old joints, like my um, arm and leg joints and all that sort of stuff. So I'm trying to think of the future and trying to build an author business, and I hope to do that full-time one day, and that way I won't need to use my body so much for my jobs and hopefully it will help with pain in the future and stuff. So I try to, I'm trying to build it while I can sort of thing and hopefully earn a decent living out of it enough for me to um, live off in years time because, uh, yeah, having like the thought of having to do a physical job in 10 or 20 years time is kind of scary really because, um, yeah, I've already suffered chronic pain and stuff like that and I have to keep moving and stretching and stuff, so I'm, it's just really, for me, it's thinking of the future. Plus, I mean, I've always loved writing and I have a crazy imagination. I can just come up with stuff on the fly and it'd be a waste not to use that, really. Because, um, yeah, people have always said, why aren't I a writer every time I make up some crazy story sort of thing. So I've definitely it, always been like that. It would be a waste not to use your creative flow. And I also have a spinal condition. I don't know if you guys realize that. I am one of millions of Americans with scoliosis. I still have scoliosis, even though it's a 10-degree um, curve instead of a 50-degree curve. So, yes, Boy, Riley and I have the Damage of, uh, I would say I'm in my 30s too. I just turned 31 and I would say my back is like, uh, 
Well, it's not a 30-year-old band. Let's just put it <laughs> that way. It's getting, it's getting up there in its old age. And um, yeah. I can't do cartwheels anymore, but um, I was walking in Penelope up until the age of 18 when I had the scoliosis surgery, and the scoliosis surgery went horribly long, um, left me semi-paralyzed, and, um, well, actually, semi-paralyzed is the truth, and then um, left me on a walker, and I'm still trying to get off that. But enough about me. I just, I, you and I share a bad back to begin with. And yeah. I am a teacher, and it is stressful. <laughs> and it <laughs> is stressful. They don't pay teachers well around the world. They don't pay teachers well in the U.S. too. And so, yeah. enough about me. I want to know what your favorite book is that you have written. Um, probably Ant or Lost Son, which is my first book. I put two years, look, took two years to do that. And um, when Dale uh, L. Roberts was on, he mentioned how I paid for the editor. It cost thousands of dollars to edit and me being sort of working part-time and stuff and I don't earn a lot of money being disabled and everything, I had to cover that cost. So I spread it over a period of about a year and a half, the editing, and my editor was okay with that, so because it was a really long book, it was 140,000 words long, epic fantasy. So that's definitely my favourite book, and I put a, a lot of work into that book, sort of thing. And I mean, it didn't do overly well when it came out. My new series, Basaria Online, has done a lot better. But yeah, I, it was definitely a labour of love. Those books, and uh, book two is out as well, and I hope to release book three this year. So that's definitely my favourite book, Air to a Lost Sun. Well, one one thing I will tell you is your covers are absolutely beautiful. If you go to Riley's site, you guys, um, you'll see her covers. They're absolutely beautiful. I want to read Under the Rising Sun, hint, chant. I want that on Kindle or something because I want to see behind the covers of th- these books because your covers are absolutely beautiful. Yeah, uh, especially Air to a Lost Sun and Dawn of a Lost Sun are definitely a uh, great sort of thing. That cover designer was awesome. So awesome, she's got like a 16-month waiting list now, so it, I can't oh. probably get a cover from oh, God. any time. Oh, God. There we go. Yeah. There we go. So, really, if you had to be educated by anyone inside or outside your field, who would it be and why? Well, I'll probably go inside the field as writing is like I identify, like writing it means a lot to me now and I guess I see myself as an author in the future. So probably someone like Craig Martell, who's a very well known indie author, or uh, Michael Anderley, who's another really big indie author, or Chris Fox, all the big authors in the uh, science fiction and fantasy sort of thing, who've made a pretty big impact on the industry. I'd love to, uh, I don't know if they run courses, but yeah, I'd love to be educated by them. Uh, just how to write, I mean, they write books really quickly, but as well as uh, they have a big readership that loves whatever they put out, basically, because they write such yeah. engaging books and such engaging characters, and yet it only takes them a month or something to write the book and get it out there. So I'd love to have their productivity, but as well as just how well they write and how quickly they do it. Now, do you put disabled characters in your books or no? You just leave the disabled out of the sci-fi and fantasy books. Uh, they're sort of somewhat disabled characters in the Lost Sun world, uh, but not too bad. The first book series I've written that isn't actually out yet. The main character in that, it's a post-apocalyptic book, the main character in that is disabled and he's got or sort of what I have, like, uh, I don't think I ever named his condition, but he's got a bad back and he's very sort of, I guess, fragile in a lot of ways. It's a very sort of dangerous world. And 
or less that it's extra worse for him because of his condition and he's always in a lot of pain and stuff. So those books mainly focus on the uh, main protagonist being disabled and just how much worse it would be in a sort of post-apocalyptic world for a disabled person. Uh, I mean, he's not the hardest model than me or anything, but yeah, I just wanted, I, I like the extra added level of conflict and danger for the main character yeah. to be sort of physically weak in a world like that sort of thing. And that I'm hoping will come out next year because I've written three books of that series. I just haven't, I need to edit it and get it out there and get covers and everything. So that's definitely yeah. going to explore the disability more than my Lost Son books have. Okay. So, um, you're getting closer to copying a disabled character into your books. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I really, I really like the idea of it too because there's not that many books out there that do that sort of stuff, and it's no. I mean, it's good that no. there's more multiracial there's not stuff that, now. And no, there's not that many books that talk about disabilities. When I wrote my I guess it would have been my debut novel. I focused characters who had disabilities, and um, yeah, I did it in a way that it shone the light on um, characters with disabilities using their disabilities as gifts. But um, that's just me because I agree with you that there's not enough disabled characters Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely in science fiction and fantasy post-apocalyptic. I mean, they might have yeah. a character who has a disability, but it's never usually hit the main person. But, yeah, so, and, you know, I mean, yeah, I do yeah. focus a fair bit on his disability and he's, you know, he has to think about it a lot because it affects everything he does. But uh, I definitely make it also empowering for him, sort of the main character sort of thing. Yeah. Um, it's not something he just dwells on in it. It just holds him back all the time. Because I think that's yeah. also important. Yeah. Make the characters have gifts of disability, not use them as curses. Yeah. So I know you have now with your flip it, you guys. So I know Riley wants to ask me a couple questions. Actually, he can ask me as many of these pleasers. But I know that Riley wants me to wants to interview me, so I'm going to let him take it away. Okay, cool. You asked me about why I write and I said about the future, so I guess I'll put that question on you. I mean, you're a multi-entrepreneur. I always have problems with that word. You know, you've got your podcast, your writing, and your Amazon author page says jewellery as well. So do you do all this sort of thing, like... Uh, grow your skills now so thinking of your future so you're like self-sufficient in say 20 years time you can afford your own I, medical care and all that sort of stuff I am thinking of I'm a big picture thinker I don't know if you guys know this but I'm a big picture thinker I am actually because I have a publishing deal now um, I am actually slowly but surely um well, I don't know about solo now, quitting my day job because I'm a teacher and teachers don't make, make very much money. So I hope yeah. to make a living off my books as well and off um, my trust fund. And I hope to make a living off my books. The trust fund is not for my books by any means. It's for me and me only. So um, I am hoping to make a living off my books because I, like you, by the way, think of the future. I mean, I can barely walk, let alone I can't be in teaching for the rest of my life. I taught preschool for 11 years, and now I'm teaching third grade music. And I'm like, something's got to give, and I'm actually getting a degree in journalism so I can um, use it as part of my book, too, have the journalism background, because I feel like 
Boston team is very physically demanding, and even though I love it, um, I'm quitting my job because of the paycheck, not because of people people around me. It's because of the paycheck and not because I can't physically do it. It's because of the paycheck. So, yes, I'm looking at a 20-year time span here. I know what teaching's like. I was on my feet all day. I also had really bad flat feet. And by the time I got home after a day of being on my feet in the classroom, yeah. my feet were killing me and I was so tired. All I could do was sleep and then get up and go to work the next day. So that's definitely trying. And it's yeah. good to have multi-skills it's, just in case something does happen for the future. You can always fall back on something too. It's definitely... Um I learned that lesson um, when I lost my biological mom because I'm like, how, if I teach for the rest of my life, how am I supposed to do this with my condition, a.k.a. their body? <laughs> so I'm like, let's start publishing books now while we can still do it and uh, make money off of my books, which had come true. I mean, I come and win my original book, made it to number one bestseller in about four DA hours or something astronomical like that. And this podcast um, came off, I come and win. And now I have a Patreon campaign all set up for this podcast. You guys can subscribe or donate or donate through PayPal's or, um, yeah, go support independent public authors. That's my PSA because Loyalty and I need um, cash to keep this going. And uh, I don't know about Australia, but I'm on Social Security income. But I know they have programs in Australia for that. But still. Yeah, we have free healthcare and everything here too. So it's a, I think it's a bit better system here in Australia, socialised medicine and all that sort of stuff. Oh, can I? I can definitely can get I, a lot of help for free. Can I just pack my bags and move out of America, move to Canada, move to Australia? Can There's I actually just, quite a lot of Americans here too, so because I get yeah, a bit yeah, like I all of a smaller version I, of Canada. Uh, yeah. No, I'm not kidding when I say that because our political climate is, is just, yeah, it's just not good. And our um, president, let's just say he tried, when I turned 30, on my 30th birthday, he tried to pull Medicaid out from underneath all of us. <laughs> Yeah, I have an American so, friend, and just hearing him talk, it's pretty sad how you have yeah. everything set up over yeah. there. Really. Yeah, basically. Um, I, I had basically a quick like, second question, which is... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go on. Okay, well, it's just sort of an extension of that question. Uh, do you find all the skills you have to learn being an online entrepreneur uh, stressful, or do you enjoy the constant learning and trial and error of everything? I... I enjoy the um, constant learning, but I don't like, funny enough, I do not like Amazon, and I shouldn't say I like marketing either. I, I don't like Amazon because Amazon is just wonky. Amazon... Is just wonky and uh, changing algorithms every 10 minutes, apparently. And it's like, Amazon, stop. You're doing what you're doing. And they pulled um, their offices out about a month ago from um, South Carolina. So we lost that. Amazon is going down. And, of course, and that's why I got a publishing deal. <laughs> the day the day I was feeling sorry for myself, I actually started um, scrolling on Twitter and found my publisher. And it's like, 
Okay, you guys do all the work for me. I just write books. You make them pretty, you edit them, and then I get all the royalties. And I'm like, no, I don't like Amazon. Do I like marketing my books? Yes, but no, I don't like producing the books. Well, I can understand about Amazon. I had a lot of drama with Amazon recently, and now my books are <laughs> available everywhere. They're available on Kobo and um, or all the different stores. So I pulled them out of Amazon exclusive. Just yeah, I had yeah. so much problems. And yeah, my books Amazon. Went down while... Amazon Ku. I mean, like I was going to ask you had all your um, books available only on Amazon. I'm mean, like no, and. When they um, did Icon a Win, originally, they, I had a beautiful cover. Beautiful cover. I did it by a um, cover creator, and because at the time I only had money for it. And so, um, they, I get the guy's book, I open it up, my family, my family is at my house, we open it up, I looked at the dang book. They squished my subtitle day one. Day one. They squished my subtitle. And I'm like, Amazon, create space. I could kill you right now. But I, so I've had a love-hate, rela- I've had a love-hate relationship for, with Amazon for about seven years now. And I said, I'm done. I'm done as of August 31st. As of this year, I'm done. I'm handing it over to my publisher who knows more about SEO than I do, and I'm done with Amazon. I'm like, this battle for seven years is over with. Done. Goodbye. (laughs) If I want to stay um, active and creative, I need help. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to have, a, I guess, a traditional publisher like that. And uh, maybe in the future I'll try to be a hybrid author, have a bit of both. So because it's definitely hard being an indie author and having to do everything yourself, especially when you haven't got the money to pay someone else to do everything sort of thing. So, yeah, you know, yeah. my family all work and everyone, my friends, they've all got day jobs as well. So it's kind of I have to learn how to do everything and then I have to do it. So it's definitely... Yeah. Difficult and it can be and, stressful too sometimes. So. Oh, it's especially with my first book. That was my first book out of the shoot, and I screwed it up. It taught me a lesson. Always get cover designer to do it. Always get a yeah. cover designer to do it. Don't use um, Amazon cover creator. I'm like, day one? Why don't you teach me this lesson? Beautiful book. Beautiful book. And I finally, uh, after seven years, I finally updated the cover. I'm like, I'm so sick of looking at this cover that I need a professional designer to help me with the cover. And she did, and we got it all figured it out. But day one, I'm like, Amazon, you're supposed to be helping me make income, not twist. Book titles. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like yeah. your cover. Anyway. I, I checked out all of your books, so um, <laughs> they've all got nice covers. So. That's because they're professionally bad. I thank you for that. But that's because when um, you didn't see when I was first starting out, I won't, I won't show you guys when <laughs> I was first starting out. That uh, that I come and win haunts me now. Haunt me now because I still have it out in my office. And I'm like, oh boy. I'm like, you haunt me. You, <laughs> Amazon, Amazon, the wizard come and win, haunt me now after the seven years. Yeah, yeah. And anyway, I mean, getting covers can be stressful, but in the end, you just got to trust your cover designer because it's easy yeah. to just. Yeah, I, um, I say, I, I, it, I, guess. I, yeah. I say to my cover designers, I'm leaving it all up to you. You have more experience than I do in this. Uh, <laughs> I'm still learning on the cover design thing. Um, it's definitely a, it's a learning. It's even though the cover designer does it, it's just 
very hard not to want to change everything. So I try to step back and let them, they're the artist, I let them do the job. Yeah. So anyway, that's a learning yeah. experience in itself, really, getting covers to That's a learning, especially um, when you're disabled and you can't necessarily, you have a bad back and you need to move. Ugh. I'm like, I'm a done people. <laughs> I'm done. I, um, I may, I declared I'm done as of September 11th, but it's actually going to be August 31st that I'm officially done. I hand it over to my, um, small publishing house and then I'm done. They can deal with the back end of it because Amazon, okay. um, Amazon is, changing every algorithm in the world and those of you on um kindle world well kindle world is now long gone and you can't get the rights back and so on like yeah so okay what would be this is my last question to you and you can ask me stuff about my disability what would be your best advice for people with disabilities who want to write books? Well, I suppose um, a bit of what I'd say to everyone, you just find a way to write, uh, do it basically, sit down or stand, if you, you can dictate, yeah. it might be better. No, it's probably something I have to learn eventually just because sitting down is sort of uncomfortable. Um, dictation would be a good one. I mean, it depends what your disability is, but find a way to write and you don't have to write like 10,000 words a day or anything just write even a few hundred words or just do it when you can and just I mean my lost son books took two years to get out but I did a tiny bit every day and I learned a lot in the process of just writing a tiny bit every day and I've put that to practice since then so just do a tiny bit each day and try to find a way whatever works best for your disability I have to get up and walk and move all the time sort of thing. So sitting down and writing 5,000 words a day is not really something I'm going to be able to do. So I try to, I use writing sprints. I time myself for 15 minutes and write as much as I can in 15 minutes. And that way I can get up after 15 minutes and walk around and stretch and, you know, try to get rid of some of the pain sort of thing. So definitely find a way to write, but work around your disability, whatever that is at. Maybe even look at dictation, like drag and dictate is the main one, I believe. And that's a good way well, to not have to sit down. It's interesting you say that because, you guys, I listened finally. I listened. Now, me listening doesn't always compete. <laughs> and so I have a book coming out with my publisher. Thank you very much. On dictation, on, I'm not kidding, when I say Siri, when I say dragon, I use both. I have a PC sitting on my desk right now with dragon. So I'm going to teach you guys all my tricks of the trade to save you guys health problems in the long run. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you, Wynn, for having okay. me on. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome for um, having you on and sharing your story. And where can people find you? I know you're everywhere. So where can people get a hold of you? Uh, probably my website would be the easiest way because I have most of the stuff there. It's RileyMorrisonAuthor.com. If you want to, uh, there's a contact page there if anyone wants to email me questions or anything. I do have a YouTube channel. Uh, I don't know that off by heart. They probably just type in Riley Morrison author, and I do have a podcast there, and I go into all different things to help other authors, like how to get an editor and what to look for in an editor, or how to get beta readers, or um, anyway, just all the writing type stuff. And I also have just started a podcast diary, sort of charting my uh, indie author career, just Going, I'll probably hopefully do it once a week, just saying how things are going, what I'm doing, and what I'm learning, and that type of stuff. So that'll well, also be on YouTube. Congratulations. YouTube. Congratulations oh, thank you. on yeah. that. And you guys have got to go check out Mayweather's books. The covers, as I said, 
are absolutely gorgeous. And I thank you for calling in for my future and thinking about your disability and raising awareness about independent authors and raising awareness for the disabled. And you guys can go to Patreon, just type in Ask Lynn, and should be in the show notes. I handed it to my assistant. And it's patreon.com slash Ask Lynn. And so you guys can, um, one of the levels I have at 10 bucks is you guys can become a co-host with me if you um, want to support that way, all you guys can just support. And what I'm planning to do for one dollar is I have a private RSS feed that I will set up for you guys, so you guys can ask me questions. And via Patreon, it will be shot out to you guys. So please, 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 either. Donate via PayPal, donate via Patreon, and you don't have to get the VIP section. You can always say, I want to support Ask Lynn without a perk, without a um, pledge notice, or without something in return. That's a really cool way. And so now I'm on the Patreon, you guys. Hopefully you support that. And... It automatically comes from your PayPal, goes to mine, and automatically transfers into um, my PayPal. And so Patreon is a new thing for me, and PayPal is not. Or you can donate directly via PayPal, and you can just follow me on Twitter at WinKellyCharles, and see all the stuff I'm doing there and I thank Riley for coming on and sharing this story. Right. I hope you guys um, find this episode useful and this episode will be coming out July 4th and so I give you something to listen to at the barbecue if so you want to get away from your family and so Riley, what would be your closing word for this interview? Well, I guess to anyone who wants to be an online entrepreneur, just look at Wynn and look at all the different things she does, the book writing, the podcasting, Patreon, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you've got to multitask, I suppose, when you're at, like, not just write books, but maybe do half a dozen other things, and hopefully one of them will take off and she can... You know, even if you lose one, you still have the others to fall back on. So think of your future Uh, and try to learn what you can. I definitely agree. And and unfortunately, the future in America is getting tougher and tougher and tougher. And I know people that are, as Viola said, I know people that are moving to Australia and moving to Canada and moving to Mexico because they don't want to be here. I follow a podcaster who's moving to Mexico because of cheaper health care and because he doesn't want to be in this political climate. And he hosts a career pivot podcast. So if you want to follow Mark Miller and his journey on moving to Mexico, go look up the career pivot podcast, you guys. And his story is pretty fascinating. He left IBM back in the 90s and did um, did a stint as a teacher, left that, and now um, is a solo entrepreneur. So I just hope you guys support this podcast on Patreon, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, you guys. Thanks for having me on, Wayne. See ya.